Welcome back, bitch. <laughs> we did it. Here we are again. You guys missed all the hate speech we were just doing. That was fun, though, wasn't it? Oh, that was just a appetizer. That's a release valve, baby. That was ba- that wasn't even a sampler of the hate that we're gonna spew today. Miguel's Kyrie's got us all riled up here. You've you've brought an energy into the room that I didn't even I didn't even make the connection, but I felt the effect. Yeah, that black anti semitism or the anti semitism, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Crack amico, uh, <laughs> Miguel. <laughs> this has been dead. By Miguel. the way, <laughs> by the way, I'm pretty sure you guys are being anti semitic. No. If you know about who the real Jews are, you guys are being anti semitic. Uh, are we the real Jews? Actually, well, some Please some no. of us maybe. Yeah. <laughs> There's, you know, like uh, Native Americans are the real Jews. You tell me, people are the real Jews. Okay. You're yeah. telling me you're gonna look at Cracky, tell him he's not one eighth Cherokee. I. He has the high cheekbones, dude. Ooh, I do. You do. That's true. I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking, dude. I don't think I have any Native American in me. Have you ever done a 23 and Me? Uh, yeah. And I got. Um, I'm actually 100 percent English. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Wouldn't that be that wild, <laughs> dude? When when, 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 <laughs> when Wiggers do twenty three and me, they just call Jordan and me. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but I'm uh, I got some Scottish, um, I think some Irish and non distinct Mediterranean. Uh, I mean, uh, so hopefully Italian and not dirty Greek. The, I mean, that's <laughs> that's a Michelin Turkish. star Wigger recipe. <laughs> <laughs> My question to Miguel was: Do do women respond to these sneakers, or are these strictly for the bros? No, yeah, I don't. I don't think girls understand sneakers. I, I mean, they wear high heels, which I don't get, and I feel like maybe they have like the sense of respect of mm-hmm. the crossover, but they don't. I don't think they know. Yeah, so I, I guess like the shoe game on both sides is you kind of like pushing to the front of the line, you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's it's showing off. It's like obviously these are cool. They they don't know that like, they're cool because like they're women, you, you don't get this, but all the bros are gonna put me out front because right. they know that I should be the next in line to get some little well, bit of poo. Did you did you see the thing that was like it was trending on the internet recently where girls were trying to determine whether or not their boyfriends were like the leader of their friend group? No, but what was the criteria? Uh I, it's girl thing, you know. Like it was just indecipherable to a man. Well, girls girls have like poor interpretations of the world. <laughs> So it's like Go what on. they what they what they see and observe and then like determine has no grounding in reality as far as I'm concerned. Not but in like, boy reality. There's right. girl reality and there's boy reality, and they only kind of mix every once in a while. Tim, but, what's the girl reality of this situation right now? What do you mean? A podcast? Like if a girl walked in on, on this and was describing it to her friends, what would her interpretation? She'd be on the phone going Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. They keep saying Jewish and girls. <laughs> I don't know. Just come pick me up. <laughs> Fine. That's all. That's all they'd see. They walk in here and they would think we were talking a different language. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, the, not, there's no sense. There's no context to any of this. And that's cool. Mm-hmm. It should be that way. There should be spaces where women and men don't quite, you know, overlap. And I, I think that, it, you know, not podcasting specifically, but when the bros uh, congregate. I think I th- uh, that should like there should be stars spinning around girls' heads and they're completely dizzy when this kind of shit goes down. And it's likewise if you were to walk into a baby shower, you would be you would it would feel like you walked out into a snowstorm. <laughs> like, I have no visibility into the situation. Dude. All my senses are betraying me. Anytime I've ever had to go to a, a baby shower, I feel like I would be much more comfortable just sitting in the basement on the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> and it was mostly as a fat and child where I would have to go to these. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, anytime I anytime I go to a place and there's like multiple women women wearing like upscale, not quite formal dress, but like elevated casual, I'm just like, God, this is gonna be the most boring four hours of my life. Did you have baby showers? Uh, you, well, you're only supposed to have one for the first. Okay, and then after that, you have a sprinkle. <laughs> do you know? Do you know about sprinkle? By the, by the third kid, you have a squirt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for all three, but yeah, but yeah. I didn't. I didn't go to them. I said I'm going to respect. I'm going to respect mm. the woman's space and let you guys just have a blast. Yeah, Me, I just, I'm going to go to Dave and Buster's by myself. I just saw the pictures of my wife's uh, wife's baby shower, and uh, honestly, they could have done without the black stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, tell me about Dave and Buster's. What the fuck happened? Oh God, I don't want to. I don't want to get all into this thing because people kind of called me a crybaby on Twitter about it. Brother, let it out. I want to All right, that. so I went to the Dave & Buster's on Delaware Avenue, which to me is a Philadelphia landmark. That's To me, there's like it's like Liberty Bell, Independence Hall, or Mall. What is it? The Gallery. 
the William Penn statue, Dave and Buster's on Delaware Ave. And I went, dude, and dude, I, I like, I, you know, you know me, man. I have very fleeting and rare happy memories from my childhood. And I'd say probably two thirds of them were just like sitting with my elbows on the table, kicking my feet at Dave and Buster's, waiting to like eat mm-hmm. enough mozzarella sticks to go play arcade games. Mm-hmm. So I, I was hanging out with my sister and my aunt Nancy, and we wanted to take the kids out. So we went to Delaware Dave and Buster's, and bro, it was. A nightmare. Actually, Ben, did you have fun? I mean, it was fun to play the games, but half of it was just moms yelling at their kid like, Take one! We gotta go home! <laughs> <All> right, <jump. laughs> Damn. They coming in hot. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll get into bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Alright, so we went around dinner time. <laughs> on a week no. <laughs> Dude, you have to pay thirty dollars to park. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Cause most Dave and Busters are in a mall with free parking. It's like a fucking but, Eagles game. But I go, who cares, dude? I've got I've got a family of five, 30 bucks to just initiate fun, not a big deal. And then we go inside and there's like no employees. It's it, like they have like four different bar restaurant areas, all with like one person working. And so we go in, we we pay the thirty bucks. I pay one hundred and fifty dollars for like game cards that last maybe twenty minutes mm-hmm. for each of the kids, yeah. and so I've spent like one hundred and eighty dollars before I even sit down. And then I sit down, and I'm in, we're eating in like the arcade area, and there's just one bartender serving all of like the families in there, and she's ending her shift, and her replacement doesn't show up. So dude, like thirty five minutes goes by before we can even order food. And so I'm like, well, we got to eat before we play the games because once you play the games, you're not going to be interested in anything else. You're not going to eat your food. Like, it's set up to, like, kind of placate a fat child for 20 minutes and make a parent completely miserable. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one paying. So I, like... Have feedback for them. Anyway, I'm I'm in touch with them. They they DM'd me on Twitter. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this to. I mean, what I really I don't really want like free. I don't want a refund. I don't want like a gift card. I want a meeting with the board of directors of (laughs) Dave and Buster's. Yeah, because I need this is an institution that is currently failing, and they don't seem to have any interest in correcting it. I feel like what they're doing is they're buying time for their shareholders or whatever to like get out uh, gracefully before it just completely implodes. When you have that meeting with the shareholders, I would recommend you proposing taking the place of Buster. Because there's a gaping hole yes. in the Dave and Buster fucking... Oh, Dave and Butterly's? <sighs> Crack. Incredible. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> That's where Crack? I want to go. Crack, you need to go to this meeting with him. Oh, man. This is my this is my representative, Crack Miko. I'll and rap on the table. A meeting oh hype man. God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> White people talk, love that shit. We're here to talk about the future of Dave and Butterly's. Yeah, you could do like Machine Gun Kelly and like dance on the table and shit. <laughs> All right. All the suits are just like, yeah. <laughs> um, dude, it was just shitty. It was just so shitty. And uh, and like, I obviously I have like a, a deeper concern about like the state of like child entertainment. Like between like Chuck E. Cheese, anywhere you go with arcade games, it's just cell phone games that cost five like five dollars <laughs> a turn, and it's like. Other parents, I think, are kind of cool with that because if you go to like a restaurant, you'll see any family with like a small child. As soon as they sit down, they put their coats on the table. The the, the dad typically does not push the seat in for the mom. That's kind of bullshit. But then the first thing they do is they find something to prop up a phone, and it's just the the kids out of the the experience until it's time to pay the check and get them back in the car. Mm-hmm. And it makes me fucking sick to my. It makes me so angry. I might start like raising hell when I go out to eat. This needs to be in that pitch meeting, brother. Absolutely. I'm talking about a, 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 an environment where, like, your kids are entertained, but they're also a part of, like, your meal with mm-hmm. your fucking spouse or your new girlfriend because your first marriage fell apart. What, I don't know. I'm, I, I'd like to see the metrics on, like, their, their demographics or whatever. Um, but, dude, this is something I'm, I'm taking 100% seriously. And, uh, I, dude, <laughs> Dave and Butterly's is the future. Tim, I'm 100% serious when I say this, but... If one person were to come around and completely revamp the Dave & Buster's business model, not as Dave & Buster's, but as their own, to make it completely fun-centric, you're that man. Oh, man. It sucks to find your life's purpose at almost 40 years old, but it's time to get moving. You got a good 40, 50 years left. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Not that old. Yeah. I, yeah, I have like a. I'm on like a two week cycle. I need to renew each time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah, just what I, you know what? I was more sad than anything. I don't want to come off as like a complainer or like a Karen or anything. It was more just sad. Like, I remember when I went to Dave and Buster's as a kid, there was like an eight player arcade game where you went into a room and you were kind of sitting in a spaceship and you were all shooting like mm -hmm. the same like enemies and shit. And now it's just like, dude, it's like Fruit Ninja, Candy Crush. It, it's all just shit that they're playing on their phone 24 hours a day anyway, but it's like slightly bigger. Brother, the first time I ever turned a girl down was in a uh, Star Wars machine. It was at a place called Circus Town, and there was a dance going on, and I was like eight, and I was sitting there playing, and this teenage girl walks up with her little sister, who was my age. She's like, excuse me, would you like to dance with my little sister? And like, I looked at her, and I said, no, and I went yeah, back to playing my game. <laughs> nah, sorry, I'm on the Boba Fett bonus stage right now. Don't talk. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Crack. Well, without the girl. What are you thinking of our glorious city so far? Uh, It's, it's like a foreign land to me. I never... I Nothing like it. Any here, anywhere like uh, like here with like the row homes and shit and everything mm -hmm. so close together. Feels like you could just get stabbed and somebody like walks into like a Russian nesting doll to get away from you. <laughs> it's like a thousand places to hide. They disappear very quickly. That's the thing that sucks is if you have if you have a crime committed against you in Philadelphia, the perpetrator disappears instantly. Oh yeah, Tiny, yeah. running down tiny side streets and all that shit. What do you think about the Wigger scene here? What have you seen so far? Um. I don't know, man. To to tell the truth, I haven't been out in the city much. I pretty much just been here. All I know really about Philly so far is I fuck with the people here. <laughs> I fuck with you guys. So, um, dude, we're thrilled to have you here. Likewise. Yeah, but uh, it's it's cool just driving around and seeing seeing some of the sights. I can feel kind of a scumbag <laughs> charm to it, which I like mm -hmm. to think I kind of have that as well. So that's a great. It feels like though. a good fit. I yeah. like it, dog. I had so much fun filming that video with you last night, buddy. Hell yeah. Where'd you guys film? Uh, video for uh, on perks. Uh, music video, I yeah. mean. Yeah. Okay, sick. Yeah. Well, I mean, do people know about that? It feels like you're kind of casually mentioning something that could be <laughs> extremely sick. <laughs> well, it was, and it, yeah, those of you that have uh, heard the on perks on perks audiobook, you've heard his incredible track. And last night we uh, recorded a special video for it. Where'd you go? Right here. Oh yeah. no way! Yeah. Here. Let's uh, let's keep the rest for surprise. Absolutely. I'm sorry yeah. if I it's just blew it up. Man. Anything else? No, it's okay. okay. I'd hate to, yeah, I'd hate, I'd hate to divulge anything that we shouldn't. No, it's fine. Damn. Well, I'm glad you're having Incredible. a good time, man. I mean, we've been really looking forward to you visiting us. It was so nice to meet you, too, because we didn't cross paths at Skankfest, and I really was bummed out by that. Yeah. Yeah, and we only met very briefly. It Meeting people at Skankfest is tough, too, because you just know you're going to meet five million fucking people, so it's hard to have a meaningful conversation with really anybody that you're meeting, you know? Mm -hmm. You just kind of say hey and move on and hope you're not bothering them. I hope them. you feel like, hey, yeah, I feel like I'm bothering, bothering you. everyone. Like... But yeah, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah this... Gangfest was wild. Yeah, I, can I mean, go back, baby. I, all right, so let's talk about how like uh, how uh, let's see, unlikely it is for you to be like just hitting the home runs that you have. First of all, funny rap, almost impossible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's like at any given time, there's only like one guy that's pulling it off, and right now you're the guy. What's that like? I don't know. It's tough. I feel like. Uh... I figured out kind of the way to do it. I hope I can keep doing it without being corny because it almost feels like, especially being a white rapper and trying to do like comedy rap, it almost, you almost feel doomed to be fucking like, hey, I'm just a white guy and I go to the store and get my groceries like everyone else. And, and that's like the type of comedy you do. But I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm, I think I figured out a way to kind of do it through, uh, through ignorance. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, I don't know. I'm just doing what I do. I'm, Testing the waters every time I throw some shit out. Miguel, have you ever had a significant wigger face? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I did uh, white rap also at one point, and I just, <laughs> you know, I hated myself enough to stop mm -hmm. and didn't didn't find a cool way to do it. Wait, There's... I'm sorry. Are you white or not? Because <laughs> <laughs> your name Miguel, but he said, you said white rap. I'm, I, my, my mom's white. My dad is from an, uh, from Peru. <laughs> All right, so no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I yeah, I'm not really accepted by any race. If I went to jail, I would probably just get raped to death because I wouldn't be able to join a significant gang. Yep. You know, because awesome. neither of them would take me. You I, could get in. It's fine, Latino. man. You think you I think I want to be Spanish, white? Really. <laughs> Look at me, oh, brother. Speaking to you as a friend, you're a Lat Latin king to me. So just know that. All right. Well, thank you. But that's not going to help. Every, I, every yo, Rainy, <laughs> if I go to jail, if I go to jail, I'm not going to be able to be like, yo, Rainy said that I yeah. was Hispanic. You guys have to. I'll give you a paper because they're always checking papers in jail. Just, I'll just write a note saying Miguel is my Latin king. <laughs> that won't get you fucked. <laughs>
Yeah. No, nah, I'm gonna have to find like a, a a huge fucking Jack black guy and hope that he has like an ironically small penis, you know, and it's then big take hurt. it in my <laughs> you ass. You gotta find your own big yeah, hurt. You know? <laughs> He's selling soap now, Tim. Did you see that? Uh uh-uh. It's called wash your ass. Yikes, dude. Uh, it's, he got small meat though, right? Does I think confirm? it's fine. All right, fine, <laughs> fine <in> my eyes. <laughs> it's more than enough for me. Yeah. Hey, By the way, I, I want you to know that I kind of hate your idea of a Dave and Buster's where you're like, become closer with your family. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying it's fun. <laughs> not... Where you connect with your family and have conversations with them about your life and like what's going no, on. That's, have, I hate when that. When you have version a meal with David your family, Buster's. even if you're just fucking around with each I mean, you have to understand when I talk about connecting with your family, we're all busting balls the whole time. We're not like, and here's what I appreciate about you guys. Like, no, we're, you know, we're saying that like, hey, you're, you're, you're getting pretty tall, dude. Watch out. You're going to get really skinny and everyone's going to laugh at you. You know what I mean? Like, hey, your grades, like, we're fucking with each other. I'm saying I don't, I hate that, like, you see, like, I don't know, man. You, we're destroying any sort of sort of connection, and it doesn't have to be gay. Tim, uh, would you think it's fair to say that at Dave and Buster's, you're busting ski balls? Dave and Butterly's, you're you're busting. <laughs> well, it's not balls. Dave and Butterly's yet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, uh, dude. I'm t- I'm already talking about the poster board that I'm going to have in front of the boardroom with Crackamica walking up and down the long wooden table, just like knocking people's papers out of their hands mm-hmm. and shit. Can I suggest something that might uh, reduce like the line sizes and I'm all, I'm all ears. busyness? Uh, maybe you raise the stakes a little bit on the games. Make it like whoever loses this game, they gotta like lose a couple fingers or some shit. Okay. And then not as many people are gonna play. Only the true gamers are showing up for that. <laughs> yeah, like you you put your uh, game card in, and then it locks around your hand. And there's a tiny little finger guillotine in there. It's like, yeah. okay, dude, now play Candy Crush. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh fuck. More like Handy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, True. Mike. Good one, Mike. <laughs> Crack, how you like in the city? <laughs> <laughs> can I can I pitch you guys my new video game idea? Let's hear it, fam. It's uh, pardon me if you don't get the reference, but it's essentially <laughs> Fat Bitch Dark Souls. All right. And in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, you create your character, and it's a fat bitch. That's the the only option is fat bitch. Basically, you just pick different races, and they each have like different starting abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, a fat white girl comes with like a black boyfriend in her car. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Latinos, they get like a little man power up. So when you get into a fight, you can summon your like eight year old to like kick the other person in the head. <laughs> I like it. it. Yeah. And essentially like each level is just a different like fat bitch mm-hmm. internet fight video. So there's a Walmart level. There's outside the club level. You know what I mean? There's the parking garage level. Danny, can he get a bib because this motherfucker's spitting? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so yeah, you're upgrading your abilities. Like uh, there's like a like a pulling on like the wet ponytail clinch and mm-hmm. like the little like shitty uppercuts that the fat ladies do. You can upgrade the damage <laughs> on that kind of shit. And essentially, it's just a quest of like you know some fat dumb bitch who gets into fights going through her an average week. Now, how are you? Um, how are you dealing with these fat bitches getting inevitable sprained ankles? Uh, that's just a status effect, dude. That like recre- reduces your mobility. Mm-hmm. It slows you down. You got to heal it, or it's going to start doing damage to you. Uh, each, yeah, I guess, each level should have like a boss. Like, um, uh, like the end of the Walmart level is 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 going to be like the person that's stopping you from stealing. No, yeah. I think I think that you should work in some sort of like a Super Smash or like kind of like Power Stone, where there's like something. It's like a perk floating around, and it's like if you hurt your ankle, if you're a lady with like a cast on your arm or whatever. Oh, dude, the motorized like, scooter. Yeah, <laughs> you get a supercharged motorized scooter. You can crash into people. That's kind of like Warzone, though. A rascal, a rascal, yeah. fucking oh, upgrade. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, the mech. That's like the in Halo when you have the warthog. More or less. Rascal. Yeah, yeah, more or less. You get the vehicle power ups. Um, there, I guess there'd be like weapons and shit. Um, Child support power up. <laughs> <laughs> that only comes once every eight months. <laughs> Dude, actually, all of your upgrades and like weapons and stuff like that—that's all you purchase that by increasing the child support that you get, and that's Ooh. like a mini game between levels. <laughs> There's like a family court level. <laughs> <laughs> you got to fight your baby daddy's new girl. Um, you fight in like one of those like uh, I guess the entire game could take place vertically filmed too. <laughs> <laughs> you fight in like a like a shitty like rental uh, property that like has like, like those dust mites that are like flying past the camera the entire okay. time, um, and I th- I think you know I, I'm trying to I, I'm trying to this is I'm looking for my first foray into developing a video game. I think this is going to be it. And honestly, if anyone wants to steal the idea, that's fine. I just like to play it. But I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to form a Discord server or maybe just a channel in the Dad Meet Discord. And I, I see dudes saying, oh, I'm a programmer. Oh, I, dude, we know a 3D modeler. 
I'm going to get these dudes together. I'm going to form a b- brain trust, and we're going to put out Fat Bitch Dark Souls. What do we think about that? We call it Dark Boyfriend Souls. <laughs> <laughs> dark Skin Souls. Yeah. Or Dark Souls, and it's just about the, their dirty feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> S-O-L, yes. Brother, you got to so, get on your hands. I'm looking, I'm looking to raise funds for this right now. Um, I Yeah, so that's, that's the move. And I don't know who the final boss would be. Um, I'm in for 400k. Oh, dude, there's another thing <laughs> behind you. There's uh, we could do a level that takes place on the lawn of like your daughter's nemesis's home, and you got to fight your daughter's enemy's mom. And if it's truly massive fat bitches, the final boss could be the couch that they're trying to get out of. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the the Mortal Kombat test your might is getting out, <laughs> charging up the meter so you can get out of the couch successfully. <laughs> test your momentum. <laughs> <laughs> rest your might dude that's one thing that i think the movie the whale did well was showing the glory of watching a morbidly obese person trying to get out of a couch i didn't why well, I, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. i haven't seen it either do you guys want me to ruin the gay porn scene for you please do not no okay, all right spoilers. i'll leave it at that no boilers <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to watch it until you said gay porn brother yeah no now i don't want it spoiled it came in like a wrecking ball and I swear to God, like every movie that I take my daughters to go see has a gratuitous sex scene. Gay. It, well, it's fine, but. Do you cover their eyes? <laughs> no, I widen mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's my that's my big idea. I don't know. I if you want to talk about fundraisers that you've been thinking about, I thought of this one on the way here. I'd like to start a, a charity uh, in moral support of the victims of the earthquakes in. Syria and a Turkey. What year you know? was that? It just happened like yesterday. There was a bunch uh, of people died. It's like a big tragedy. And here's uh, the thing. <laughs> Damn. The yeah. money the money that's donated, <laughs> the money that's donated won't go to the victims. The money will go to me. Mm-hmm. The the issue is that I'm very broke and I am in kind of a dire situation where I can't afford to care yeah about the victims of this tragedy. Okay. But if if money is sent to me, I will care, you know? Gotcha, yeah. yeah. And I will give them my thoughts and prayers. Yeah, and then you can tweet very bravely for them. Absolutely, dude. I'll I'll let people know yeah. about, like, updates on who survived and who was buried under rubble. Sure. You know? The more the more money you make, the longer your twi- like, tweet thread about it will be. Right, like, absolutely. We need to unpack some of the systemic issues. If you guys that give me really... enough money, I, I'll be very empathetic. You could yeah. give your donors a fun name like the Rubble Rousers. <laughs> you guys ever get jealous of people that experience crazy earthquakes? That does sound like a pretty cool time. Mm. Hell no. You've never been like, <laughs> damn, dude, I want an earthquake. You've never once felt like it would be cool to be in an earthquake? I would love to get like taken out of one where everyone thinks I'm dead, but I get dragged out of one like day three. Out of the rubble? Everybody's, everybody's clapping. I'd hate yeah, that like shit, a dog. You got yeah. Like a dog in a Facebook <laughs> yeah. video. I just don't want to have all that rubble, like dust on my face. I hate that shit. Just that's, imagine, dude. That was the worst thing about nine eleven to me was when you saw those people with all that dust on their face. I'm like, oh man, that would never. It would take forever to get that shit. That was the worst. <laughs> that part was the worst about part. 9/11. <laughs> well, I mean, that's actually literally people are still. There's like nine eleven cancer funds because of people getting that Ugh. dust in their lungs. Who has time for all that, man? <laughs> Fucking dumbasses. Get away from the building. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking breathe through your nose, dumbass. <laughs> Assholes. Where do you think you guys would have went if you were stuck on the streets on nine eleven? TGI Fridays. Because you can get away with going anywhere and you can set up shop there forever. That's a good question. I think I would have jumped into the water. You know? You ever... Classic. Actually, that water seems pretty dangerous, too. True, actually. Yeah. Hey, did you know this about the New York City <laughs> your water system? Oh, God, I'm so autistic. <laughs> the New York City uh, sewer system, anytime it rains, it overwhelms the sewer system. So all the poop gets dumped into, like, a tributary that goes into, like, the Hudson River. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross, huh? Yeah. Other than that, it's pretty solid. But as soon as it rains, poop goes into the real water. No, Manhattan's a floating dumpster. It's full of fucking piss and shit and dirt. So, Mm. Tim, do you think it's fair to say when that happens, they start spreading the poos? (laughs) 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 Anytime the fair to say comes, you know it's... (laughs) It's like a telegraph punch. You go, nope, this is that shit. (laughs) Oh, dude, I found out there's pun competitions. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, we're gonna we gotta organize. There's one coming to Helium, I think, in April or May. And now, how bad would it be if you signed up and you got spanked, brother? I don't doubt it, man, because these people have been doing it professionally. What have you been doing? What is what is professionally? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Th- th- this is this is eight mile 
for people who think shit that I think is. Can you get like a not a record deal? Is there like a next level to doing <laughs> puns? <laughs> we uh, mean professional, yeah. This Let is me repeat the question. This is the, the pinnacle. The admiration of of people that uh, I know I would like and respect would be enough. Yeah, like who are we talking about? Who who are some of the big names in the pun scene? Dude, Wid has done it in Philly. He's the master of of puns. Wid's entire act is based around puns. True. And for those of you it's listening or puns. watching who don't know about the legendary Wid, he is a legend. And when he performs, the entire stage is just scattered with fucking shit that you would find in a junkyard. And he and Ken's <laughs> lug it all in, and they dump it on stage. And Wid, his entire hour long performance is about the items in front of him and what people suggest. That sounds it's terrible. It's, yeah, Dude, it's, it's obviously like a, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's hypnotism though, because every next joke he makes, it'll be like. I can't write, but he'll say something related to like holding a toilet seat over his head and a rubber chicken. And everyone goes like, ah! they can't believe it. They lose their minds for this. And it, honestly, dude, it gets me. Dude, when he does a chicken thing, I'm like, dude, you're out of your clock in mind. <laughs> Are we done? Danny, can you pull up the video of the wind? <laughs> pull up the video of the legendary wind. I'm, I'm sh I, I don't know if he has like a highlight reel or something, but like. You, you you just don't understand. Like, you think of Carrot... What do you guys think of Carrot Top? Real quick. It looks I, great. You know, right? I don't have him? any thoughts. How would I look Carrot this Top? up? The legendary... Yeah, weed. probably legendary. W -I -D. Has he always been Wid, or did he ever have his last name? He's, he's been, been the been like Wid. He's been the legendary Wid since <laughs> the 80s. And I think he's been on, like, HBO. Wid. Whoa, he had a TV program? There's only one legend in comedy, and his name's Rich Voss. <laughs> Let's get it straight. No, these guys are about the same age. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, baby. Brand this new. Is reason why. <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh, it's... <laughs> R. Kelly, when it's very cold out. <laughs> <laughs> it was ice cubes. <laughs> I can't compete with this. <laughs> <laughs> the jacket's a new touch. I'm walking out of it out of, after three minutes of this shit. I'm walking out. It's got two foam hands. Die hard Giants fan. We're number 10. <laughs> Fuck the Giants, though. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Dude. There's a redneck calculator. Incredible, man. <laughs> a very lazy politician. Yeah, hi, 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 hi. Oh, I mean, you the the crowd eats this up. The Olympics. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> This fucking stinks. Oldest trick <laughs> Baby. So this is this is who Mike's worried about loot like just being dominated by. <laughs> Mike, you will destroy this fucking. Oh man, I appreciate that vote of confidence, Crack. <laughs> crack. choking off? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. Yeah, I know, man. I'm giving a hundred percent, alright? And you you only give it two percent. That wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> he does this for an hour without stopping, dude. <laughs> There's no like, so what else? It's just. <laughs> I can only hope to be his apprentice one day. Bro. Yeah. Dude. Hey, that's the first. Yes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> if I had a gun in my hand right now, I'd be fucking <laughs> spilt over here. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Danny, I'd say that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the what's the format of these pun competitions? <laughs> the ones that I watched, they give you like a topic to prepare ahead of time and people just go up with like notebooks and they'll do like three minutes of what their puns are on that topic. So they'll say like, Okay, potatoes and you gotta do all potato puns for like what would three you minutes. Hit them with? Brother, I, I, don't, I don't really have time to watch, <laughs> to, to write potato puns, man. I'm l busy listening to War Mode with Billy and Spud. Hey. All right. You got there eventually. But I can see the appeal of something like that. Oh. <laughs>
Nice, nice. Wow. Damn. Rest in peace to the taters, huh? Damn, but <laughs> I might give up podcasting to do this, so I might push all my chips in. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I might even start doing drugs on stage, so I might even get baked before I go up there. <laughs> you really wedge this one in. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I got it's a it's a, a bright future ahead of me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, dude, I really hope you step it up before you meet the professionals, or you might get fried. Mm. Yeah. French fries, Cack. I'll get my passport yeah. so I can get French fried. These are all very good. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the only appropriate response for a great point. You go. I acknowledge that that was a fun. <laughs> Crack. Have you ever taken part in any kind of rap battles? Um. Yeah. At, at like some uh, parties growing up, because I started rapping when I, when I was like fourteen. So by like senior year of high school, we'd all be like drinking, and there'd be people coming to the party from different towns and shit like that, and we'd battle a little bit, but it was never some real like right for a battle type shit it was just some kind of drunk freestyling type shit but no nah, i wasn't much of a battler did you have a mortal enemy at any point where you're like damn it's on site as soon as i see this motherfucker oh yeah yeah i i did i did have somebody um who was it his uh he he probably stopped rapping like 10 years okay. ago um, bitch, because he fucking stunk. <laughs> uh, and buried him. Go but ahead. yeah, this this fucking dude uh, was constantly like throwing out disses about me and like other people. Like he's he chirping. was just a fucking yeah. He was just running his mouth because he sucked and he was trying to get somebody to respond to him because he wanted attention. And he went to um, school with my girlfriend at the time. They went to a different school down the road. And uh, we got a place school. called uh, Cookout. Well, yeah, I was in college. She was in middle school. <laughs> but they they had this place called Cookout in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And, like, kids will go there on, like, a Friday night before or, like, after a football game. And they both went there, and he, like, tried to fight my girl. What? Yeah, he tried to fight my girl. And she held her own. This was a – she was a thickie. But, uh, <laughs> so she held her own. But uh, I heard about this shit. Actually, this is, this is a boss in Fat Bitch Dark Souls. It's a white <laughs> rapper. <laughs> yes, use this for a mission. Um, but uh, I heard about this. So she handled him. When I was 18, and I saw him at the mall, and my friends left. I was like, wait a minute. I'm not going to let this shit slide. I'm going back in there. I thought they, my friends were just waiting in the parking lot. They dipped. So it was just me, and he was with like five dudes. I went in there. I took his hat off of his head, and oh. I was like, if you want your fucking hat back, come outside, you fucking faggot. Dude, that's wigger pantsing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so he came outside, not alone, oh, that's with all of his shit. boys. We were all chirping, talking shit, whatever. And then this one dude with, like, a brass ring on just splits my shit the fuck open. Mm. Like, wide the fuck open. I'm laying there. That's where I actually got, I don't know which one's the bigger scar. But I had to get, like, 22 stitches. I had Jesus to get four uh, stitches internal to stitch my tissue back together. And um, they talked to whoever was, like, legally on the case or whatever. And it was all of them on one side saying that I started the fight and started the physical shit. So there were no charges that could be pressed or anything. I paid oh, my own funny. medical bills. So, yeah, that was that was a real L. Whoa. Well, I don't know. Dude. Wow. You went up against five guys. Like, that's guy tries to fight my impressive. girlfriend, and then yeah. I get jumped. That's, I mean, that's classic. I mean, now, that's, would, that's you, say, rabbit, real would you say that wiggers also are into fat blonde girls? Um, I don't know. Me personally. That's the one thing they're like, okay, black guys, you keep that. <laughs> <laughs> it seems more and more, and I am i don't fit so much into this criteria. I think I have my own kind of beliefs on what, what type of bitches I like. But it seems like black dudes like fat white bitches and wiggers like skinny black girls. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, right. I think that tracks. Yeah. I think that tracks. But that's like a vague thing. Everybody's different. We know that. <laughs> yeah. I think they're uh I wonder what I wonder what it is. Can we break can we get into the psychology of black guys liking fat white girls for a moment? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably brother. help if we had a black guy on hand, but let's instead imagine what <laughs> what I'm the closest thing you go. <laughs> yeah. Let's imagine what they're thinking. I think I okay. I, th I think what's happening with wiggers liking skinny black girls and black guys liking fat white girls is they're both getting into what they imagine the other side is into. So you go, all right, what are black guys getting into with these ladies that they have? Fine looking, good shape. And when in reality, they're just looking for the biggest bitch possible. 
And so they go to the same thing. They go, what are the, what, how are these white boys not scooping up all these fat bitches? <laughs> Why are they leaving all these big bitches for me? I think you're right on the side of uh, the wigger uh, perspective, <clears throat> definitely. I think on when it comes to black dudes, like in fat white bitches, to me, I think it just seems like, and this could be wrong, but I, <laughs> I, it feels like some kind of Freudian shit where a lot of black dudes end up having big old mamas. Yeah, so I, I think relative to that crack, it's like you want somebody with the size of your mama, but without the volume of your mama. <laughs> <laughs> that's you hit the nail on the head right there. I think that's it. Wow! Now seems like a great time to thank our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of Dad Me Lane is presented to, you, <laughs> presented to you by Manscaped. Every every pubic region on this panel is shaped up by Manscaped. I shaped my shit up this week. It looks great. It's pageant ready. Dude, I got a little P-U-S-S-Y on Monday. Nice. nice. So if you go to manscaped.com, use promo code FATBIRD, get your shit shaped up too, have it looking good, have it smelling good. And dude, without Manscaped for like a decade, my pubic area, my asshole, and my face were just a lawless no man's land. <laughs> Indistinguishable from each other. <laughs> More like no woman's land. Yes, dude. Ooh. Exactly. But yeah, go to manscaped.com. They got everything you need. They'll take care of all your fucking male grooming needs. And fuck it, like, even if you're a lady, you could probably use Manscaped. I don't know if they have one Manscaped yet, Tim. What do you think? I think we're probably 60 years from that technology. I'll <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, manscaped.com, promo code FATBIRD. Get your shit looking good. Get your shit smelling good. They got everything you need. Also, go to trueclassic.com. The only t-shirts that I fucking wear anymore are from True Classic. They make all kinds of cool shit, all kinds of cool athletic wear, fucking shirts, fucking pants, Fucking cargo pants, fucking sweatpants, sweatshirts. Tim, you've worn true classic t-shirts, man. How they fitting on your shit? I'm telling you, man. Sometimes my my tits get a little big. You know, maybe I get laid off. I'm on the sidelines for mm-hmm. a little while. Obviously, I don't have the best eating habits, and uh, I go, damn, dude. All my clothes make me feel like I'm just pushing my titties against someone's like fucking windshield. Brother, I'm gonna say both. <laughs> you put on a true classic, and but, it's like, all right, my shit's all accounted for. I can walk around like a normal human being for a while. But Tim's in great shape these days. I'm not in as great a shape as I would like. So there's days where I'll put my back tits in the ponytails to make my shit look normal. <laughs> but then there's other days where I don't have the time to do that. And thanks to True Classic, their t-shirts make me look great and feel great. The most comfortable t-shirts that I own. I wear them almost every day. I can't say enough good stuff about True Classic. Go to trueclassic.com, use promo code FATBIRD. You get a nice little discount of whatever you order. Tell them Tim and Mike sent you, and they'll probably be like, who the fuck is Tim and Mike? What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? But I'd appreciate here. if you said that anyway. True Classic, they got all kinds of great shit, and 2023 might be the year that I go exclusively True Classic, so I'm hoping to get a, uh, a full-time sponsorship from them. Nice, dude. True. Also, check out bluechew.com. Uh, pretty much every boner that I've had in the past two years is thanks to Blue Chew. <laughs> And I used the blue chew the other day. I knew I could almost time exactly when my wife was going to be getting home. And y'all know Monday is my normal pussy getting day. And brother, I was ready for that bitch when I got in the door like a dog that's been left alone all day. I got in that thing. <laughs> Just shit all over the house. Yes. <laughs> she rubbed her nose in your own wiener. <laughs> I had a blast though. Man, what 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 a what a great he, time. Mike got out of his crate again. <laughs> <laughs> I did get out of my crate. I tore that pussy up. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about the Jews and he's got <laughs> shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All thanks to BlueChew.com, promo code FATBIRD. You get free sample of Blue Chew when you do that. You just got to pay the five bucks shipping, handling, and talk to a doctor overseas who will not understand a word of what you're saying, <laughs> but he's going to approve you anyway. BlueChew.com, promo code FATBIRD. And finally, go to BetterHelp.com using promo code FATBIRD. I say it all the time on here when I have my little, my little jigamajoo in my brain over the summer. Whoa. Jeez, wait, <laughs> if y'all are experiencing jigging majus like I That's did over the summer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, these Kyries are haunted right now. It's causing me to say this shit. But my a jigging majus, is that a black Israelite? <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> I mean, but you said it. I'm I know, brother. trying to interpret over here. I know, brother. Dude. But go to, go to uh, betterhelp.com. They'll get you straightened out, man. They'll help you get on the right track. You can do fucking shit over the phone, video conferencing, texting. You can do whatever you want with them. They make it easy to swap out your uh, counselor for a person that fits your needs. So check it out. BetterHelp.com, promo code FATBIRD. This is all FATBIRD. That's all we do is Can FATBIRDs. You, I, this is probably, you probably can't do this with BetterHelp, but I wonder if you could seek out like a, a therapist who's a midget. And just every time you meet with them, you're just like, <laughs> you just see their hair in the, in the frame. 
<laughs> you're like, okay, I guess things aren't that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you deal with it? How do you keep going? <laughs> that would be pretty cool if you could select, like, ethnicity and shit like that for your therapist. Is it like a Mortal Kombat interface where you're choosing your fighter? And can you unlock secret therapists? <laughs> <laughs> Make them wear different clothes. Yeah, if you request it, I'll bet you can get it, man. Yeah, alternate costumes and shit. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Taking time. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't too picky with my therapist's skin, but I feel like I'd need a. I've I've never done therapy. I definitely desperately should, mm -hmm. but um, I've always felt like I could only talk to a bitch about my problems. So I'm much better with women. Yeah, I feel I, like a man. I'd be like. He, he's judging me or some shit. I will say this, though, Craig. You got to be careful because I had one that was very attractive one time, and I realized, like, I, I was inflating how good cool. I was at shit <laughs> and, like, kind of, like, <laughs> downplaying the shit that I was really doing that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it actually probably wouldn't have taken that much for me to go pro out of college, and I just feel like maybe I should have applied myself more, but yeah. I'm still in pretty good shape. I got, like, this shoulder thing. I don't know, man. What do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry I run late. I took on 13 new kids for the Big Brother program. <laughs> they are all Big Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, uh, I'm a couple minutes late to my Zoom meeting. I caught my wiener in the door again. But my honey spot is like 60-year-old woman. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, Mike. 60? I feel like when they're that old, I'm just like, shut up, bitch. Nobody cares. Well, yeah. the good ones will just listen to you. Like they won't, they won't lead you. They'll just try to get you to speak the entire time and just kind of assure you and just allow you to keep opening up further and further to the point where you're thoroughly embarrassed about all the shit you said. I go, I, if I talk to a 60 year old lady, it doesn't matter where she is. I go straight in the fuck you teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I go eat my shorts, bitch. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I go, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to, I, I understand that I shouldn't be having this stuff, but seriously, eat my fucking shorts, bitch. I'm not doing any homework. Get a good therapist will have a pair of shorts on hand to eat just to shove it in your face. Yeah. The midget ones with tiny shorts. Have you guys ever eaten shorts, a lady shorts? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Dude. <laughs> Is there a gas leak in here? <laughs> Sometimes I do be smelling my wife's underwear. What? Oh yeah. yeah, well yeah. yeah. That's, that's well, I've, I've held on to a pair of underwear. Mm -hmm. Well, they leave them and then you know you you keep them. Is she dead or just gone? <laughs> uh, moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, away. Damn, allow but me to have say them. yuck. <laughs> Whatever. And you guys are yucky. Whatever. The first lady's pussy who I ate, um, I found her underwear in my boy Danny's bedroom the next day, and they were period underwear. Ugh. Wait a minute. Cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> why? Wait, why were they in your boy's room? Because that's where I ate the pussy, brother. Oh, okay. I was used two-timing you. No, man. I, I eat road games a lot. <laughs> I feel that. That's also huge wigger stuff, is getting pussy at your boy's place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Would you be upset if you found out somebody fucked in your bed? Uh, yeah. If I didn't give him permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be yeah, if I didn't give him a quick... If they didn't wheeze the juice with me first, yeah, yeah, I'd be pissed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be like, "Yo, dude, you're taking some liberties." Obviously, I, I like like stealing. Like, do you need pussy? Mm -hmm. You know, I can I, just ask. Dude, I will say there there was one time where, uh, and I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, say there was one time where I was having like a party at my house back in the day, yeah, but and uh, it was like uh, my friend, my best friend had this bitch he was gonna fuck, mm -hmm. and he was like, yo, do you think I could fuck her in your room? I'm like, if you if you get me in on that shit. So we ran a train on the bitch. She didn't even know who I was. I don't even think she thought I was attractive. My she, friend was like a sexy little Puerto Rican boy. Yeah, your, your uh, boy must have been carrying some fucking weight with him. Dude, Latin dudes can get away with anything, and they can convince women of anything. Yeah. Wow, that is... Probably I mean, the closest to rape I've ever been. Jesus Christ. No, that sounds consensual, right? I mean... I didn't force anything. All right. So <laughs> we were in the dark. I don't know if that makes a difference. How dark are we talking? Pitch black. It was in All a right. basement with no windows. This seems like a borderline case. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say an aggressive prosecutor might fuck you up, dude. <laughs> nah, it's fine. It was a long time ago. I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I got this other scar. In my forehead. <laughs> One thing I used to think about a lot when I used to go to college parties was. Um, a lot of people had bunk beds. <laughs> Was enrolling in college. <laughs> <laughs> for like, I stayed in community college for 22 years. But I used to think about seeing so many bunk beds, how annoying it must be when your roommate is fucking in your bunk bed. And you just have to endure it. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I don't know. I didn't go to college, but I'm pretty sure it's a pretty depraved experience. That's when you start cranking. Get a, be a part of the like prisons. You hide yeah. the uh, you hide you cover with a sheet, you know. But how hard do you have to crank though to get them to notice that you're bucking back at them? Oh, I would do it secretly. I would no, you got to go full train whistle like what? <laughs> <laughs> Yowza! We're just talking fucking on bunk beds, Miguel, and the guys recommended combating your roommate fucking in your bed with you jerking off. But you got to throw your elbow into it. Well, you got to make do sure it. that you do the counter. You got to you gotta you gotta lay on your back and kick up. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like a donkey you, being you born. You have to be on the top or you feel like you're kicking their bed. If I was on the top, if I was on the top, just like, and then I get woken up because my boy's crushing pussy on the bottom, yeah. I'd rock it until the whole thing tipped over. <laughs> <laughs> You're losing the most, but you're you're taking it. The that's a kamikaze, dude. It's a suicide bomb. <laughs> I I detonate my bunk beds. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, suicide bro. Suicide bunk. Yeah, dude, don't fucking disrespect me by clapping cheeks. Two inches under me. Yeah, I'll wake up. You wake up on rocky Dude, if, if I get rocked by a dude clapping cheeks, I'm getting my cheeks clapped. And absolutely True. not. True. I'm That's a homosexual experience. Down. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> now, do you think if, if you don't want to go through all that rigmarole, do you think it would be worthwhile to just talk to yourself during jacking off like you're talking to somebody during sex? You get out loud. You've you go, lost me. <laughs> oh, you uh, fucking like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. It's like, damn. oh, you're gonna make me. <laughs> you talk like you're the girl. Yeah, like, you damn dog. Your dick and you go like, oh, it's like you're gonna make me come. I'm gonna, I'm gonna damn, fucking come. I'm damn, brother, you come. sure this is only five inches? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> this is a full ruler ass dick. <laughs> is it girl, okay girl, your hand is so strong. <laughs> You got those calluses? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to hype yourself up during jacking off. <laughs> you got to be your own hype man. <laughs> While nobody, you're hype nobody man. squeezes me like you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you say to yourself. Yeah. You say that to yourself. You're swatting your other hand away. <laughs> we have literally everything in common. <laughs> There's not even a di We're not even two different people. We're one guy. This rules. <laughs> That would be the ultimate, getting, like, supremely homosexual with your singular <laughs> being in the universe. It's just us, dude. We're completely detached from the, like, cosmic d direction of energy, dude. Let's let's get through this. Man. Crack, are you much of a jacking man? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a once or twice a, a, a day guy, usually. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah, I just got ah, to be get it on man. out. Yeah. A lot of people say it makes them think about sex more. For me, I feel like I'm, like, getting rid of the poison. Yeah, yeah. Moving on with my it's day. The roadblock in your day. I feel like I'm werewolfing. I got to tell the cops to prepare for me. Uh, uh, what it, based <laughs> on, based on that, how do you think you're gonna like raise your son if you have a child? Hmm. Do you think like you're gonna be opposed to masturbation? Like if it ever gets brought up, or you know, like your your wife comes to you and it's like your son's masturbating. You have if to it's tell a him son, to stop no. If it's my daughter, I'll fucking sheets. kill her. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. You're in for a rude awakening, man. <laughs> um. Nah, man, I mean, shit's natural. I, I mean, I think a lot can be solved by taking away fucking, uh, like, smartphones and iPads from mm -hmm. the kids. Because you don't want them jacking at fucking five years old or anything like that. But Yeah, but come on, you're, dude, you don't jack okay. memory. I actually just thought of this recently. Or, what do we think about how, since television has gone away, like, do you think softcore was made for children? <laughs> I hope not. Like, I, like I had, HBO. I, I was late thinking about night. it like, dude, like Showtime sh making softcore series, like Hot Springs Hotel or whatever, like Red Shoe Diaries. Yeah, that wasn't for grownups. That was like the that original. Was, like, I'm pretty uh, sure that was made for like eighth graders. Mm -hmm. Brother, I will say this: my <laughs> fat aunt Pat, God rest her soul, used to watch that religiously, and I think that was their ideal demographic: women, just just fat, lonely, pretty old ladies who are just. Looking to rub that thing on anything. I don't know. Well, that's all gone. I also think older dudes that don't fuck with like computers or shit, that's their stuff. Because yeah, was, one time I was up. at my in law's house and I was looking for something on DVR and he had DVR'd every cinematic porn series that ever <laughs> existed. <laughs> Tight. Yikes. I would think yeah. it's like. I, girl I wonder porn. if he also thought like real, real, uh, real deal porn was like indecent like oh mm -hmm. that's that's vulgar well it's a little know? yucky sometimes yeah you know <laughs> i don't always but, like it so i think uh yeah I, I think i think there there is a concern what <laughs> yucks you out miguel 
I don't know. Sometimes it's just like, oh, what are they doing? Like when girls yeah. spit on a dick during right. a blowjob. <laughs> Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I would be so perturbed if a girl, like, leaned back and, like, spit mm. on my dick. I'd be like, get out. Like, whoa, but lady. Dude, think, all right, it, it, this is a serious thought. Think about how many dudes are just, like, preserving their virginity into, like, 26 years old just because they're such a fucking online weirdo. And then they finally are with a woman, and it's just like instant, like jackhammer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's yeah. All, like it's, it's got to be a nightmare out there for young people. Yeah. I don't. I don't envy them, man. I'm the opposite, Miguel. Treat my PP like I'm trying to desegregate a school, brother. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Hit me with a fire hose. <laughs> Make a dog bark at it. <laughs> I, I want to. I want to feel a German Shepherd's whiskers. I want. I want. I want six white men in suspenders <laughs> chanting at it. <laughs> Get out of our women! <laughs> I want Jerry Jones. <laughs> I, yeah, I feel bad for Jerry Jones. Did you see that picture of the owner of the Cowboys? Crack! I know you're a Cowboys man. Yeah, so what? I hate Jerry Jones. No, oh, <laughs> oh, come on, man. But I, I was in his defense on this one. There was a picture of people lining up to scream at black kids desegregating a school. Mm -hmm. And a teenage Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, just happened to be in the background. He just looks like he's watching what's happening. But oh, he got lumped in with all the people. Oh, man. Imagine if you're in the background yawning and you're just like, <laughs> yeah. and there's just rocks hitting black children's heads and you're just like Aah. yeah you can't be tired near a race riot no. <laughs> or he's he's flipping off his friend behind them yeah. <laughs> yeah that'd be pretty unfortunate that's why I just don't even go to that kind of thing anymore <laughs> <laughs> it's that, just not a good look dude wouldn't that be a fun water park ride <laughs> A fun water park ride? Yeah. I mean, how are you going to bring black people to it? Yeah. <laughs> In a right. t-shirt? They'll find their way. <laughs> just, yeah. just tell them it's a wave pool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long as you as long as long you stage it in, like, the, <laughs> the kid park. black history. Did I ever tell you, I... I <laughs> The, well, I, I shit my pants one time at a water park when I was like 12, maybe I was between 10 and 12. I couldn't find the bathroom. I was walking around for like mm -hmm. long enough that it just fell out of my ass. Oh, yeah. I like like moved a leg mm -hmm. and it a log fell out. Yeah. But there is poop. So I went into the lazy river. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Washed my ass in the lazy river. Damn, you made it the lazier river. <laughs> I was going to say the hazy river. Mm. From shit particles. Yeah. <laughs> Craig, you ever been pooping in the lazy river? <laughs> nah, but uh, <laughs> I've pissed in many a pools. Mm -hmm. I uh, uh, always piss in the pool. I never get out. Uh, yeah, you things yeah. make me happier than pissing in the ocean. The ocean, fair game. The pool's <sighs> no dice, man. The pool is better suited for it. I love pee pee pooling. It's not. How's the how's pool better suited for peeing than the ocean? Because chlorine kills urine. Yeah, but it's still, the urine is still there. It's not like it hits the chlorine and it's... Yeah, no, you can feel it. It's warm. Yeah. There's still piss in there. It's in, just, in like, there's uh, no bacteria. When we did, like, morning practices for water polo in high school, you'd, like, kind of piss in one spot so that you could we swim piss in back each other's through mouths. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd keep, because, the you know, we have outdoor pools in California, so it was, like, it, it was pretty cold if you went to, like, a 6 a.m. practice. So you would piss in one spot. You'd get in the pool, you'd piss, and then you'd swim through it just to kind of heat up. When you guys piss in each other's mouth where you're like, homo, polo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yuck, no. Yeah, but I do like floating in the ocean completely and peeing and mm. feeling like the, the Vitruvian man. That's nice. I feel like connected to the, the universe at that point. You'll never feel freer than when you're unloading in the ocean. You shit in the ocean, right? Ever, yeah. I have never known. I, I know you're a river shit. I got into a, I got into a frigid river in Oregon, and I pulled my shorts down and I just f free floating shitted, and it was a p. It was a mystical experience. <laughs> it felt like I was wearing a wizard hat for just a moment, staring into an infinite orb, and just every second that's ever existed, I could account for it as I was just squirting diarrhea into this cold river. Did I you was, feel like one of those ladies that river birth? Yeah, I was. Yeah, <laughs> basically, it was a natural a natural birth diarrhea into a river. <laughs> Yeah. Crack, what were you going to say, man? Uh, yeah, I was going to say you said diarrhea, but did you, were you aware of what type of movement it was? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> or you just had no idea the consistency coming out? I knew there was, I knew it was urgent, 
And at that point, it's just like, whatever, dude, just hit the red button, then let the <laughs> airlock close. Yeah. Whatever's happening, dude, just get it out of there. Tim, how close was the next person? Um, we had we had a pretty good grip on this area of the river, so I'd say I was safe. But, okay. I mean, it didn't were... it didn't float up to the surface? No, I don't think so. It dissipated. Diarrhea right sinks right. and stinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I took yeah, care of Yeah, because if it's solid, it, it pops up. It's a brown flounder. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hold it up for a picture. <laughs> well, I told I told you on that same trip, I, I also had an issue. I almost shit myself on a uh, a, a river hike. It was it was like an ankle-deep river through like a canyon, like a narrow canyon, all the way back to this unbelievably gorgeous waterfall. And that water was freezing, and I was, like, swimming. You know, people were basically just, like, hanging out on, like, a circle around the edge, just taking in the waterfall. I was like, nah, dude, I got to swim in all mm -hmm. that chop. And I loved it, and I floated it, and it was just beautiful. And on the way back, I was like, ooh, man, I had too much Hawaiian food. And I go, I, we're, we're almost out of the canyon back to the car, but when we get to the car, it's, like, a 45-minute drive back to a, a bathroom. So I was like, all right, let's break off of the trip. There was, like, a, a, a part where, like, the canyon kind of bulged, and it went out into, like, a wooded area on each mm. side. And I walked, like, probably 50 feet away, and I went behind this thing. And it was there was still a foot trail. So Mary Jo had to like kind of make sure that um, no one was going to walk up this like side path and encounter me like squatting behind a rock. Yeah. And so I tried to do this as fast as possible. And I so I squatted and I pulled my shorts all the way to the side, kind of like a Latina <laughs> teenager giving birth at prom. Mm -hmm. And I just pulled to the side and squatted down and I shit and it went all the way down Ooh. my leg. And I was just like, no. Yeah. So then I'm looking at I'm looking back at the shallow creek that we were just walking. I go, okay, I just got to get to that and then pretend to fall down and like roll around and get it like wa mm -hmm. get my leg washed <laughs> off. And I go, all right, babe, cover me. Uh, do, like ma make a diversion so that the rest of these tourists don't see me. So Dang. I like rush back and I instantly sit down in the water, and she looks at my legs <laughs> and loudly goes. Ew! <laughs> and I'm just sitting on the ground covered in shit with people just walking off. <laughs> I'm sick. Dude. It was the worst. It was the worst. Damn. I mean, obviously I was laughing, but <laughs> Tim, do you yeah, think that canyon was bulging because the view's so beautiful? <laughs> sure. He asked the question, man. I know. I, yeah, it's probably yeah, it's, it's good <laughs> an explanation. I was, maybe it had more to do with like erosion, <laughs> or like uh, uh, the foliage. Um, kind of keeping like a soil build up, and you know, the, but do you think nature takes a blue sky chew to get an erosion? <laughs> <laughs> you get extra Can't points have... for like fitting more puns in there. Are you practicing, <laughs> <laughs> brother? I know we got about two minutes left. So. <laughs> Instead of an applause meter, do they have like a boo meter? Like, <laughs> people are just you! going back to work now. It's like. Maybe I should this get this guy. The longer, the longer <laughs> it takes the people dude. in the audience to be like, get him his trophy. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my story of shit in my pants and MJ blowing the diversion for me. But but by the way, yesterday, fourteen years married. Oh, congrats, dude, buddy. Oh shit. Number one bad bitch worldwide. This is the best ever. What are you gonna do? To celebrate. It. Well, we went to Taco Bell, which is our custom. Mm. So I drank 32 ounces of Baja Blast mm. and farted so badly that it ruined our <laughs> night. <laughs> I had 24 hours of vicious farts because I, I went to the um, Southampton Spa the day before, the mm -hmm. Russian Spa, and I just, I would, dude, I ate like a gigantic bowl of borscht. <laughs> and so for the day before up until like probably this morning, I, it was 24 hours of the most horrendous farts of all time to the point where she would just, wherever we were, she would leave the room. And could could you tell upon seeing and smelling that Porsche that you were gonna be unloading the next day? No, it caught it kind of snuck up on me. I think there's like some some like pickled vegetables in it and some potatoes <gasps> and stuff like that. And dude, it was delicious. It was it was the best. And what is it like Russian stew? It's like a yeah, it's like a it's, it's like a radish and beet soup with potato and it's dude, it's so wholesome. And uh, man, I really wrecked my stomach and I I had some offense, dude. It got to the point where she was leaving the room and couldn't come back because she was like, it's not going to leave. It's, <laughs> you're ruining. Yeah, it. I might have to move to another apartment. Yeah, so that's really that really stunk, and I'm very sorry about doing that. But dude, yeah, dude, 14 years. Oh, congrats, congrats, buddy. Getting it done. Would it be fair to say you were a borscht belt comedian? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. That seems track. like a perfect time. <laughs> That seems Woo. like a perfect time. Damn, dude. He, he's he's infected you. Mikey Buckets Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crack, crack, crack. Crack, Miguel. You what? guys want to promote anything before we move over to the Patreon? Go ahead, dog. Uh, yeah, I got Dork Court. 
Uh, I did one last or two days ago on Sunday. Uh, I'm doing another one um, next Friday. Friday the seventeenth, we're gonna do one. It's gonna be a Edward Forty Hands door court. Mm. <laughs> it's gonna be very sick. Door court is. I used to hang out at open mics and think about how embarrassing and fucking gay this is for everybody involved and how much it sucks that this is what we're doing. And then I thought, like, what if we put it on the internet for everybody to see so they could be like, what a fucking loser these guys all are. <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what we do. We do an open mic on the internet on Twitch on Twitch.tv slash Light Kool Aid. And then everybody in the chat, which is you guys for the most part, if you're not there, come over because it's mostly just us. Uh, and it's just being like, this guy's a fucking idiot and a loser. <laughs> it's so much fun. The last one on Sunday, we it was all people I didn't know. I'd never met before. And they came up and just bombed. And then I just sat there going, they said that you clearly have tits. You know, you're a fucking loser. Now, are these... Are these- uh, are these dudes signing up for this? Or are you going out and like recruiting people? Well, usually it's just me recruiting people that I do mics with. Um, this one, this past weekend was uh, somebody else that I do mics with sometimes invited a bunch of people and kind of described poorly to them what we were doing. Uh, and so they just showed up. I think some of them were upset. Some of them got it. But the chat was having a lot of fun. Yeah. So that I think is what matters. I mean, I gotta imagine you're going to open mics consistently. You're probably just thrilled that someone's even paying attention to what you're doing, even just to call you a fat gay bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fucking fun. Honestly, if you're in the chat, I think it's way more fun. So guys, come hang out. Twitch.tv slash like Kool Aid. Next Friday we're gonna do one. Um March fifth is a Sunday. Uh it's gonna be the first live one. So hopefully that's sick. Uh, I'm doing it from Long Island in Alibi. If any of you guys are in New York or Long Island and want to come through, uh, hit me up on something on Twit, on Twitter or uh, Instagram. It's all like Kool Aid. Hit me up. I'll get you out there. It's gonna be a lot of fucking fun. Otherwise, find me on Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. Um, we're having a great time. Crack. What do you want to promote, brother? Uh, yeah. Subscribe to Crack Amico on YouTube. Listen to my music. It's sweeping the nation. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Crackamico Rap, and also just dropped this week uh, my Patreon, where I've got exclusive, uh, not yet, but they're coming, exclusive streams, casts, and songs. Crackamico or Patreon.com/slash Crackamico. Thank you for having me, boys. Hell yeah, this was a treat, fellas. Yo, and by the way, we'll see. We'll see you guys. Should we mention Shady Maple again? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, don't forget uh, Shady Maple. We're doing our retard breakfast the morning after the Super Bowl. So we're going to be celebrating the Eagles win at 7.30 a.m. at Shady Maple in, what town is this in? It's outside Lancaster. Yeah, yeah, but if you just Google Shady Maple Smorgasbord, you'll find out where the fuck it is. We're going to have a blast the morning after the Super Bowl at 7.30 a.m. If you come dressed as a wigger, you're going to make us rock hard because we're coming dressed as wiggers. We're actually going to pick out our outfits in a few days. I have two plaques to give away for Titus Wiggers. What a treat this whole thing is going to be. And I swear to God, you have never been to a fucking buffet like Shady Maple. Yeah. I have a brand new tracksuit I haven't pulled out yet Ooh. for Monday. I can't wait, brother. Damn. So. Oh, I can't I wait. will say Bring I it. overheard a conversation from two random people on the street talking about Shady Maple. Yeah, I mean, it's got a pretty good following. It's the real deal. It's in the air right now. I took my son to his basketball game on Saturday, and there was a Shady Maple sweatshirt in the Lost and Found. Did you take it? No, I left it there, brother. <laughs> Bad juju. Pulled over I did. his head and uppercut him? Tim, talk about your Twitch. Oh, yeah. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Tim Butterly and also uh, YouTube, same name. Um, it's just I, I'm, I'm finally like very consistent on it. Uh, I'm doing cool hangouts. I'm playing like weird video games. Uh, it's the fucking best. Come come chill with this. I can't believe I can't believe how deep the chat goes right now. We've got we've got I don't know. You just got to come see how much fun we're having. And um, if it's if, if Twitch is too gay for you, just check it out on YouTube and maybe it'll convince you. Um, I'll see you over there. I promise you, check out his Twitch channel. It is nothing like any other gay Twitch shit you've seen on YouTube. Of it's actually probably gayer. <laughs> it's good gay. It's the best kind of gay possible, but it's not like some fucking 23-year-old girl complaining about why more people aren't in there while she's dressed like a fucking Barbie doll. Tim's Twitch is incredible. Treat yourself to it. Thanks. <laughs> also, uh, before we go, just check out my book, On Perks. Buy a copy if you haven't at onperks.com. That's O-N-P-E-R-C-S.com. You can get the uh, the print copy there. You can get the uh, the audio bundle. If you want to buy the audio book by itself, fuck, I forget the link for that, but just, I don't know, message me and I'll get it to you. 
but I promise you this shit is a lot of fun, and the audiobook especially is, my goodness, what a fucking treat. The boys really brung it home. Yeah, it's insane. It is. It's already a success. Yeah. It's, it's already a success, else. dude. I, I, I loved every second of it doing it with you guys. Hell yeah. All right, I'll see you guys over on the Patreon. Later, guys. Skinny Pooh said crack.